Hello, fellow mellows. Welcome to Vanna's Voice. I'm your host, Vanna. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that you are here to hear this. Now, let's finish up the Manson family murders. First, we will start with the card pull. Oh, thank you. We have the Five of Pentacles in reverse with the Five of Cups upright. Um, it's giving breaking generational cycles of poverty and walking away from a situation with with what you have left it's giving change oh and then the four of wands um i think i'm gonna start doing past present future readings in my episodes because it just makes so much more sense this way five of pentacles reversed five of cups and four of wands so walking away from this situation that was just taken from you and deciding to start filling your own cup and um putting yourself first, and then that is going to lead you into this Four of Wands stability and overall happiness. Oh, thank you. Hi, sisters. It's Vanna. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I would personally love to welcome you to the Queen of Darkness. In this six-week series, we will take a deep dive into shadow work while also examining one of the most notorious true crime cases of all time. The Manson Family Murders. Big trigger warning, but... If you are willing to use your triggers as tools to look deeper into yourself and become more psychologically whole, let's fuck around and find out. I love you, and please remember to drink water. Alright, um, let's get right into it. We left off with... <clears throat> We left off with Bobby getting arrested and the family brainstorming ways to get him out of jail. Somebody brought up copycat murders, but Charlie didn't really acknowledge it or make a big deal out of it. He just put that in his pocket and went on and then a few days later um he he gets a group together Tex Watson Susan Atkins Pat Krenwinkel and Linda Kasabian. Um, <clears throat> Linda was only in the family for about a month before this happened. And um, honestly, I don't know why he chose her because it seems like a pretty rookie, um, pretty pretty big job for like a rookie family member but 
he chose her and um he instructed them to go to well he instructed tex to drive the girls to the old residence of terry melcher who no longer lived there and charlie was well aware of that because he had been trying to get in contact with him about the record deal for like months before this and he literally like came face to face with sharon tate who was living there now with her husband roman polanski but roman polanski was actually out of the country at the time for work and she had her good friend ex-boyfriend jay sebring who was um like a really big hairstylist he learned to do hair style hair in um when he was in the military um because like the buzz cut was a little boring and after he went back into the world outside of the military he just continued continued on and he he got pretty famous from like men's hairstyling um and him and Sharon were still very very good friends and she was also eight months pregnant at this time there was also um Abigail Folger who was the heir to the Folger coffee company um she was like their daughter and um, Wojtek Frowski, Frowski, Wojtek, how do you say it? Let me see. Oh, thank you. Frowski, Wojtek Frowski, who was dating Abigail Folger um and they were staying there while roman and sharon were out of town and then when sharon came back they just stayed um with her to help out um and then there was also a boy named Stephen Parent who was only at the house because he wanted to sell a radio to um, William Gerritsen who was staying in the guest house while like the landlord was away. So, Charlie instructs Tex to drive to Terry Melcher's old house um, that he had been to before with Charlie. I don't think they ever let him inside because Terry Melcher didn't really like Charlie. But um, he knew where it was at. And he told him to go there and to kill everybody inside. And um, the girls, Linda, Susan, and Pat, did not know what they were going out to do. They were just told to bring to wear black, to bring a change of clothes and a knife, and to listen to texts because that was kind of like the dynamic um, of the family, like men were superior and Charlie was like the most superior, but 
nonetheless, the women had to listen to the men and, like, submit to them. Um, so, yeah, they, they pull up to the house. They walk up the driveway. Um, they climb the fence instead of opening the gate, I guess, because they didn't want to, like, make a scene. But once they get over the fence, they see Stephen Parent, that kid that was just there to sell the radio to the person in the guest house, uh, William Gerritsen. And he is in his car. He, like, was about to open the gate and leave, and Tex walks up to him and shoots. He Well, he slices him, and then he shoots him four times and kills him in the driveway. And then Linda stays outside to kind of act as like a lookout and um the rest of the group goes they like sneak into the house through an open window or an unlocked door or something and um they find Wojtek asleep on the couch Abigail in her room reading a book, which Susan finds her, and this is kind of sad. Abigail's first instinct when she looked up from her book and saw Susan was to smile at her. She smiled at her, and Susan walked away, and she saw... um, Sharon Tate and JC bring in Sharon's room just um, having a conversation, but they didn't notice her. And she went back into the living room with Tex and Voitak, and she told Tex that there were three other people in the house. And um, Tex instructed Susan to. and I think Pat as well, to go get them and bring them into the living room. And then um, Tex proceeded to tie um, a rope around J. Sabring's neck. And I think it was also like, They also tied it to Sharon Tate in some way, but um, they tell Sharon to lay down on the floor, which is very hard for her because she's eight months pregnant. And the first person that they kill is Wojtek. He tries to fight back, but they, it's unsuccessful, and they shoot, Tex shoots him and stabs him, like, so many times, um, Jay makes a comment, or he starts to get really angry, Um, because Sharon is pregnant, and they kill him, Um, Tex kills him, and then Abigail Folger runs out the door, and Tex tells Pat to run after her, so she does, she catches up to her in the lawn, and she just starts going at it, stabbing her, um, while that's happening, Susan holds Sharon down while Tex kills her. 
Um, they stab her a bunch of times. And it's so gruesome. I, I'm pretty sure they like carved something into her stomach. Um, Linda, once she like realizes what's happening, she tries to get them to stop by telling them that like people are coming, but they don't believe her. Um, Tex goes outside. Uh, Pat isn't sure if Abigail is dead yet or not. So he finishes the job and tells her to go see if anyone is in the guest house. She literally just walks over there to like where she's out of sight and like takes a deep breath, doesn't check the guest house, tells him no one's in there. Um, they all, besides Linda, go in and make, um, make it look witchy, which is what Charlie said to Susan before they left to make it witchy. They write the word pig on the door in blood. Um, they use the blood to, to make it like a scene, um, more, even more of a scene. Yeah, so that, so they make it look witchy or whatever, and then they leave through the gate this time. So they have to like text hits the button to open the gate, um, and I guess they go back to the ranch. When they get back, they talk to Charlie, and he actually goes to the house to make sure, to, like, look at everything, make sure it's, like, done right, um, wipe fingerprints, all that, um, and then he goes back to the ranch, and the bodies aren't found until the next morning. by the housekeeper at like 8 a.m. And it's gruesome as fuck, but they don't connect it to, because the whole point of this allegedly was to make it look like a copycat murder so that they could get Bobby out of jail, um, but they actually don't connect the two murders yet. Um, so at the ranch, they're like watching the news, um, and Charlie notices that they haven't connected the murders, so they're like, okay, well we should probably do it again and the next night he sends linda or actually no he goes with them so him charlie linda leslie van houten which she had been with the group for a while now um, Tex and Pat and, um, Clem, who was a man who, he was 
already working at the ranch when they got there, but um, he wasn't very intelligent. Like, he was really good at taking orders, but he wasn't very, like, intelligent. Um, so Charlie basically just used him to, like, do whatever he wanted him to do. So Linda drives, Charlie is next to her in the middle, and then there's, um, I actually don't know, I think Clem next to him in the front, and then Linda, or not Linda, my bad, she's driving, Leslie, and Houghton, and Pat Krenwinkel, and Tex in the back seat, um, also, Susan was there, and before they left, Susan and Tex snorted meth. Oh, thank you. So anyway, Charlie has Linda drive them around for hours, and he's super aggressive, like, telling her to turn last minute, and then getting mad when she misses the turn, and, like, elbowing her really hard. Um, and then eventually it's like past 1 a.m. and he like all of a sudden knows exactly where to go. So he starts giving her like more clear directions and they end up at um, a house in this neighborhood that they were familiar with because they used to like party there at the house next door. But those people that they that lived there didn't live there anymore either. And they were at the neighbor's house. They stopped at the neighbor's house, which was the home of um, Leno and Rosemary LaBianca. Um, they had just gotten back from like a lake with their boat and their son would have been with them but he asked to stay one more night and go home with like his friend's parents so he actually wasn't at the house that night and so they get to this house um charlie goes into the house and he ties up leno and he um tells him that like not to worry um he's just gonna rob him like no one's gonna die or anything and um Leno tells him that his wife Rosemary is in the bedroom sleeping and he's like okay um give me your give me your wallet and so he takes he takes Rosemary's wallet and he walks back to the car um, and he tells Pat, Leslie, and Tex to go in. Um, he explains that Lena is tied up in the living room and Rosemary is asleep in the bedroom and he he tells them to go in and kill them. So, and then Charlie leaves with Linda, Susan, and Clem. They actually go to Denny's. Um, Charlie gets four milkshakes for them um, and tells Linda to go leave Rosemary's wallet in the girl's bathroom because I think it was like connected like it was a Denny's that was like connected to a gas station so Charlie gets the milkshakes and Linda goes into the girl's bathroom in the gas station to leave the wallet in there. Charlie wanted her to like leave it on the sink. So this is fucked up, but so that 
a black person would find it and steal it and then get accused for the crime and then get connected to like all of them. But um, Linda's like not even trying to be a part of this. So she puts it in the in the toilet tank and it's not found for like a while after. So um he's he's telling them that like this is how they're going to get Bobby out of prison and he's like manipulating everyone especially Tex because Tex was, like, the one who did the drug deal in the first place, so he's, like, Bobby killed this guy for you, and now, um, like, you can't even kill for him to get him out of jail, but really, Charlie's, like, trying to start a race war. It's so confusing, but, yeah, so... After Denny's for the milkshakes, Charlie drives everyone to the beach and they go for a walk and he's, he, he pays special attention to Linda. He even like holds her hand and um, yeah. They go for a walk, and while they're at the beach, they actually get stopped by a police officer. But Charlie says he's just going for, him and his friends are going for a walk on the beach, and that's good. That's a good enough explanation for the officer, so he bucks off, and... Um, they leave the beach and Charlie drops Clem, Susan, and Linda off at an apartment complex because, like, not too long ago before that, um, Linda had met this guy that lived in the apartment complex and, like, stayed with him for a couple days or something. Um, And then he gave her a ride back to the ranch. So he drops them off at the apartment complex and tells them to go kill the guy. But Linda intentionally doesn't go to the right door. Um... And then whoever answers is like, well, I don't know that person. You must have the wrong house or I don't know, something like that. And um, they decide to just hitchhike back to the ranch. And then nobody really talks about how they didn't do it. But um, meanwhile, Tex... Leslie and Pat are all at the LaBianca's house murdering them. So Tex is in charge of Mr. LaBianca and Leslie and Pat are in charge of Mrs. LaBianca. So they like tie her up in the bedroom and um, Tex starts like murdering her husband and he screams and she is at first like cooperating with them but after he starts screaming she realizes that like he's being murdered and she can't she can't just stay still anymore so she tries to escape but they've like tied her up with a with a lamp cord and she when she gets up she ends up breaking this lamp and um 
she goes into the hallway. Um, Les Pat goes after her. Leslie kind of stays in the room. Um, Pat tries to stab her, but she's like, again, like not strong enough and she keeps hitting bone and it's just like not working out. So, um, she, they call for Tex, um, and he comes over, finishes the job, and, um, then he realizes that Leslie hadn't done anything, and Charlie specifically instructed him, um, to make sure everyone does something, so he simply tells Leslie, do something, and, um, at this point, Mrs. LaBianca is already dead, but Leslie stabs her, and then she just continues to stab her. Um, yeah, and then they help themselves to some chocolate milk and watermelon. Pat writes Helter Skelter on the fridge in blood, except she spells it wrong. She spells it like Helter Skelter. Um, and they leave. Everyone makes it back to the ranch, and they don't go looking for Charlie because they're exhausted at this point so they just go to sleep and then the next day they wake up they see all the stuff on the news um still no one is connecting anything together and it's partly because they're in different um jurisdictions so there's that. Um, or actually, the the Gary Hinman was in a different jurisdiction. And they did actually try to call um, the LAPD and like let them know that they have a case that's similar, but um, It didn't, it didn't work out for some reason. They didn't put it together for a while. Um, I'm pretty sure they had like older detectives on the Sharon Tate case and newer detectives on the LaBianca case, um, which is just interesting. I don't know. But the first people to put together that, like, it might be connected to the Beatles were, like, the younger people on the LaBianca case because of Hilter Skelter on the, on the refrigerator. But they didn't really, like, pay that any mind for some reason. Oh, thank you. Oh, also, when, when Charlie took them to the beach... Um, he, Linda was pregnant and he basically was like, oh, hey, I heard you're pregnant. That's so great. And by this point in time, they had like a bunch of kids on the ranch. Susan just had a kid, which is crazy because then she like killed Sharon Tate, who was eight months pregnant. Um, yeah, they had... They had a bunch of babies, but Pat, Patricia Krenwinkel was like the main, she was like the mother on the ranch. Like she took care of all the kids. Um, okay, so after all of the murdering, they're extremely paranoid. 
um, Tex gets a call from a friend who says that his mom is worried about him and would like to at least know that he is okay. And for some reason, Tex tells Charlie that his mom got a call from the FBI. And um, this is basically the reason that they start to pack up and go to another location called Barker Ranch in Death Valley in like the middle of the desert, like hours away from any civilization. Um, so yeah, he basically just starts, he tells the family, we need to get ready. We need to get ready for, for Helter Skelter, which is like what he was calling this race war that he was predicting was going to happen. Um, so they started collecting dune buggies and getting things ready to move out to the desert. Um, Before they left, he, they had been there before, but they actually came back because um, Terry Melcher was going to listen to um, Charlie play music finally, which is what he had been like trying to get him to do for so long. But um, so they were there before and they came back, but Charlie actually left a few family members there um, with no food, just in the middle of the desert at this, like, little ranch with, like, no plumbing and or electricity. Like, he just left them out there, and eventually they found some other... um, people who lived out there and they like they switched sides (laughs) they um they decided to go live with them instead and like ditch charlie and the family um So before they could move back to Barker Ranch, like, all together, they were actually arrested. 26 family members were arrested for auto theft. And um, on this day, or... The next day. In the newspaper, they had both of those last two murders, the Sharon Tate, J.C. Bring, Abigail Folger, Wojtek Rakowski, Rakowski, um, Stephen Parent, Rosemary, and Leno LaBianca, and then they also had like the the family members who were just arrested, all in the newspaper, like on the same day, but they hadn't connected any of them yet. Um, but when the police tell Charlie why they're all being arrested he seems relieved and they're like huh 
that's weird but they're basically like all released pretty much immediately because they can't prove that any specific person in the family stole these cars um so yeah they just like end up taking the cars and they can't do anything about it um After that, they actually kill somebody else who is at the ranch, Shorty Shay, um, who he was just like another ranch hand, um, but he was kind of like trying to get George Spawn to sell the ranch. Um, and he was like offering to get rid of the family for him so charlie was like you he basically used him as like a scapegoat for his paranoia and um killed him and then they like cut up his body and buried different body pieces around the ranch or something but i don't know why this one isn't like talked about as much so yeah and then september 1st comes around and charlie moves the family out to death valley at barker ranch um where they are to prepare for the upcoming attack um right now they're like afraid that like the black panthers and the fbi and the local police are all coming to get them. Um, but he has them preparing by basically like digging random holes and also searching for this bottomless pit that he's been telling them um, is like where they're gonna go hide while the race war helter skelter is happening. Um, and then they were gonna like wrap all their little dune buggies in like this gold rope and then like pull it out and live happily ever after in this hole where they can be like um, fairies or not fairies, it was some elves with wings. Leslie especially wanted to be an elf with wings um yeah so they continue to steal cars um at one point they like set a car on fire in the desert and um the park rangers are like that's interesting and then they start like investigating and they end up talking to the those other people that like the family members that charlie left there for however long to survive on their own with no resources um the other family that they went to go live with they were talking to them and Charlie was like not like they were not friends um because Charlie was always very paranoid about people um stealing his family members like even from the beginning like the gurus on every corner in San Francisco he wanted to like get away from from any opportunity for people to take his family away from him um but those people told like the park rangers what was going on that like there's this guy charlie they think that he's jesus christ um they're really fucking weird and i don't know what's happening um so the park rangers get involved with like the local police and then it starts this whole investigation and then they're arrested for auto theft again except in death valley now um, and this time 27 people are arrested total, but Charlie is not included because he wasn't there because 
he took a little road trip to go think. Um, because at this point, he was like losing people, like those two girls who um, decided to go live with the other people in the desert, and then like other family members were trying to escape even though he moved them out into like deep into the desert where they were so far from anything they were still trying to escape um actually when they came in and raided the Barker Ranch and they arrested everybody there were two girls who um had left like they had just left and they they wanted to escape but um they were in the middle of the desert so like they couldn't find a way out and then they ended up getting out like with the um police i'm pretty sure they still took them to the police station they just held them in like a separate um i was gonna say cage a separate cell jail cell um so yeah after that um everything starts breaking down um they're like starting to figure out that charlie and the family were involved in Gary Hinman's murder, and then um, Susan actually tells her two cellmates that she murdered Sharon Tate in, like, great detail, and um, basically, like, a bunch of things start falling together, a bunch of things start coming out, people start confessing the things, and um, they figure it out, and they're, all of the right people are arrested, because they know, like, who was there on the nights of these murders. Um, also interesting, when they first booked Charles Manson because okay so he wasn't there the first night but they decided to go back um like a few days later and just see if like anyone else was there and there were more people there including him and that's when they arrested him and they booked him under Manson Charles M aka Jesus Christ God (laughs) what the fuck um so yeah <laughs> Oh, thank you.